Hello everyone, and if you're still following me, welcome back to my channel. And at the request of one of my fans, I'm going to try to do a video completely today in English. And I don't know if you can understand what I'm talking about, but I'm going to put subtitles in the video. So, what are we going to talk about today? Well, I bought this on the internet for 82 RMB used. And I don't know if you realize, or you acknowledge, or can identify what it is. It is a camera that came out back in year 2008. A year which I assume many of the users of this website were still learning how to speak. And why did I buy this camera? Well, it's because it is the same model as the first camera I have ever owned in my life. It's a Samsung camera. Does anyone, like, miss Samsung as a camera manufacturer? Well, I, I assume many of you have already forgotten the Samsung-made cameras. But here we are with a Samsung digital point-and-shoot camera with a uh, 1 over 2.3 inches clip and 8 megapixels. So how does it hold up today? And I know what you're thinking. A camera like this is going to get its ass kicked by, well, smartphones of today. So, throwing to the competition, I have a, well, I'm, going to, I'm not going to call it Huawei, I have bottom lines for pronunciation. It's a P20 Pro that I bought like two years ago. Today I'm going to find out how does a camera from 12 years ago hold up against a cell phone? From two years ago. And I know what you're thinking. You think it's going to be an obvious comparison, but wait until the end of the video and you will find out. The first thing I would like to talk about, about this camera is quite obvious, really, that this camera doesn't shoot raw. So I imagine some certain person with a funny hairstyle might be majorly disappointed. And the next thing is, this camera doesn't have an adjustable aperture. Well, at the wide angle end, which is a 28mm equivalent, you get f2.8. And you can't stop it down, like stop it down to f4 or f3.5, you can only stop it down to 7.1. There's only two stops of aperture available in this camera. And if you zoom it to the long, the telephoto end, it's a, it's kind of blurred really, I can't tell. I think it's a 10 times zoom, 10 times optical zoom, so it's like 200 or something equivalent. And you get a f5.6 or f6.3, I don't know. I forgot, and I forgot to charge this camera, so I can't really read the numbers and tell you. And if you stop it down, you can only stop it down to f11. Maybe not the fastest camera, maybe not the fastest lens, maybe not the best choice for shooting in low light situations, unless you use the internal flash, which I know many photographers nowadays may hate using internal flash. It gives off this feeling that it's unprofessional, but Look at some of the works of the greatest photographers, the greatest street photographers. They all use internal flash to create something that is, that is unique, something that looks memorable. So, I don't see that as an issue. But I get why someone may be, you know, upset by the inclusion of an internal flash. I imagine those people to be quite pretentious. And... The ISO, it caps out at 1600. I assume someone would think that 1600 is insufficient for a modern camera. But it has only a 1 over 2.3 inches clip. So I imagine the noise would look quite abysmal if I shoot at 1600 ISO. But then again, I don't want to find out because I don't want to shoot any more pictures on the shitty card that I inserted into this camera. And of course, auto white patterns, and... And believe it or not, this camera actually has a 
manual mode. You can set the aperture and the shutter speed all by yourself. Which I, I don't really think people who picked up this camera would, would be inclined to find out about what manual means. Okay, so on the left is a picture I took with my P20 Pro cell phone camera. And on the right is the picture I took with a Samsung point and shoot camera from 12 years ago. From the first look, you can tell that well, I took the pictures at the same spot. So the cell phone looks considerably wider than the lens on the camera. So I guess it isn't 28mm equivalent after all. What about image quality? Well, first of all, let's look at the sensor. The cell phone sensor was supposed to be a 1 over 2.3 inch 48 megapixel sensor outputting an image of 12 megapixels. And the camera is an 8 megapixel sensor. I don't know the size. And let's zoom in. If I zoom it in, you can tell that, well, the cell phone looks sharper, definitely. But look at the contrast and look at the over sharpening effect. I find the cell phone image a bit too over sharpened to my liking. And even though the camera is a bit softer, but I think it's not over sharpened, it looks natural. And look at the contrast, look at the highlight. I think it like preserved the details in the highlight better than the cell phone. I don't know why, I'm going to assume it's because of the algorithms behind, you know, the image processing. And let's look at the highlight. Yeah. And, hmm, I don't know, I think the highlights are, well, equally well preserved. But over on the Samsung, you can tell that there's a lot of color fringing going on. There's a lot of purple around the branches. And down here, yes, then again, it's considerably sharper in terms of image quality, in terms of the leaves on the trees on the cell phone. And down here, still, the cell phone is sharper, not only because of the megapixel count, I think also because of the lens. I took a shot into the sun to see flare, and first of all, on the Samsung, there's noticeably more flare than on the cell phone. But you can see that the sky, the detail of the sky and the cloud are, well, almost the same. But in the shadows, everything looks brighter on the camera. Now let's zoom in. And yes, the detail of the leaves looks better on the cell phone, but like the dark shadows, well, it looks brighter, but it, it seems like it's full of colored noise and stuff like that. And yeah, everything looks blurry again because, you know, it's from 12 years ago. And yeah, and look at the highlights that the leaves reflect. It looks like there's far more reflected highlights on the cell phone than on the camera. Now look at the building and yes, even though it's a 48 megapixel sensor, the image looks cleaner in terms of noise on the cell phone because, you know, new algorithm. Now just to throw it in as comparison, on the left is the Sony knockoff camera from previous videos. On the right is the Samsung point and shoot camera. From the first sight, you can tell that the flare is far less noticeable on the Sony knockoff. But if we zoom in on the picture, the trees over here. Yes, although the Sony was marketed to be a 24 megapixel camera, Somehow the 8 megapixel Samsung looks sharper than the, the Sony knockoff. And look at the building over here. I shot this picture at base ISO, so it's a ISO 100 uh, according to the camera. But I think the image looks cleaner on the Samsung knockoff. 
and the overall white balance I think there's a bit there's a tint of yellow or green on the Sony knockoff and there's no weirdness on the Samsung so why cover this camera in the year 2020? I mean the image quality, well maybe it is better than the Huawei P20 Pro in some circumstances, in some aspects, but it's 2020, many phones take better pictures than this camera and many uh, phones have better color science than the camera. And I would never recommend spending 82 RMB on this kind of camera. So why would I cover it? To me it's because this camera symbolized something great. A great time period for, I think, for families in this country. You see, back then we shot on film and most families used those cheap point-and-shoot cameras that came in as a bundle. Well, before that we used to shoot on film and many families used those very cheap point-and-shoot cameras from Kodak, which came in as a bundle with like two or three rolls of film. Those cameras use hyperfocal distance with really small aperture, so the image quality was usually abysmal. And, and back then, film was never cheap. Even nowadays, film rolls are not cheap. So photography was never a hobby for the common people. But photography should, because photography should document what everyday life of the common people were like. So, yeah, I think f in a way or another, photography should improve itself so that more people can embrace it. And then came digital cheap point-and-shoot cameras. Instead of using rolls of film, we use SD cards. We can delete, we can edit as soon as possible. Well, maybe most people don't edit their shots. So, since it was cheap and the cost has been greatly reduced, almost every family had one of those cheap point-and-shoot cameras. It was great. They have zoom and you can take it and shoot it. You don't need to worry about focusing. You can bring it anywhere you go. Like on trips, when you see a great view, you take a picture of it. And, and it's different from taking a picture on your phone. Because a camera is a specific tool used to capture, you know, capture scenes. And the beauty of using a dedicated tool is that you're fully immersed in, in the action. You're fully immersed in taking pictures and photography. That is something cell phones can never give you. Also, there are real buttons on cameras, so you feel more in control rather than taking pictures on your phone with your touch screen. And that, was, that time was great. Everyone was able to enjoy photography. Everyone could take great pictures. Well, maybe not great by the standards of most people, but I'm sure the people who took those pictures absolutely loved what they took. And nowadays with the advent of cell phone, we take photography and taking pictures less and less seriously. The action of taking a picture on our cell phone never left such a big impact on what we're doing. We never, give the, we never get the same satisfaction as taking a picture on a camera. So that's why I miss those times. So if there's any more piece of tech that you would like me to cover, Preferably really crappy pieces of technology that I can make fun of. Please tell me in the comments and if you really like what I did, hit that follow button and hit that like button. I'll see you on the next video if possible. Thank you.